Null references have been around since the dawn of time, and yet we never got to love them. They caused issues of all kinds. I will now show you all the shades of grey when trying to cope with the null references in the latest edition of C Sharp. The name of the game? Let no null ever pass unattended. There will be several stages in this demonstration, so if you want to skip through, I will tell you now what follows. We will cover nullable reference types first, and then talk about the is null and is not null patterns. We will then skip to type test and set patterns and their friend property patterns. That will lead us to behavioral techniques where we will start by covering the null propagation and the null coalescing operators, ending the story up in mighty optional objects. If you are ready, we can now start with nullable reference types. An empty console application, I will create some models first. I will just create two records, which I will use in the rest of the demo. And now we can create references, we can declare references to objects of these two types. These are a couple of references, some are pointing to actual objects, some are not. And the first two references are nullable, the other two non-nullable. Nullable reference types came with C-sharp 8 and they quickly became a mainstay. Would you consider not using nullable references today? Of course not. The second reference, Bob, it is assigned to a proper object, though it is declared as nullable. That is legal. You can assign a non-null reference, obviously, to a nullable one. There's no problem. But if you try it the other way around, if you try to pass null, to a reference which is declared as non-nullable, the compiler will raise the warning. Now, this is the utility function which I will use to showcase all kinds of situations that follow. When speaking of nullable references, it would be a compile time error to try to declare the type parameter itself as nullable. This is a bit of a puzzle, there are no nullable types in .NET. It is a hint to a compiler to check during compilation what you are doing with references, but when it compiles your code, there will be no indications of nullable types there. But it is perfectly valid to accept a nullable T as the argument in the list of arguments. Makes your head spin around. And you can also let the caller determine nullability. I think that is a better option unless you have something special to say with a nullable T in the argument list. Because a concrete generic parameter type can be nullable. Another puzzle for you. Let me add a call that forbids nulls and you will see that any attempt to pass a nullable or null reference as the argument will cause the compile time warning. I have to go back and remove the nullable argument before proceeding or the compiler will keep complaining. Now, I did make the two calls to this showcase function, but here is the question that will really keep you awake at night. How do I know that in the first case where I passed a nullable person, how do I know that the function will work properly with the nullable person passed as the argument, the null, actual null. I will leave that question with you. I will run the application to see. The output looks right. Mind this empty line in the first case. That is exactly where I passed null to the console write line and console write line accepts null without complaining. It just prints an empty line. So far, everything works fine. I want to move this demo one step further. I will now show you the two operators, is null and is not null, which you can use to test whether a reference is actually null at runtime. We can test if the reference is null and act in a special way if it is, so I must not touch the person object here, I must not dereference it because it is null. 
Otherwise, I might also ask if it is not null. And in this, inside of this if statement, I would be perfectly safe to use this object, like div referencing it, taking components from it to print them out or, or whatever. So this doesn't require much explanation, right? Uh, there is a corner case here. This way you will not invoke any custom equals or not equals operator overloads. Keep that corner case in mind when using is now and is not now actually. These two operators are a better way to compare against null than equality operators. I will invoke the new demo function with both null and non-null references, run the application, and look, the one item that was actually null at runtime, it has a special printout this time, so I was careful not to dereference that reference. The time has come to rise the bar. The ease operator can do much more for you than just comparing to null. Here's a story. Every reference, an object of a reference type, has the type descriptor inside of it. So it is very easy for the C sharp compiler to check not only whether the reference is not null, but also to figure what is the type of that object once it has established that the object exists. So you can also test uh, whether the reference is pointing to an object of a certain type or its subtype so that you make sure that it is safe to access the components of that type through that reference. That is what type test and set expressions are doing. Notice that every arm in this switch expression is capturing an instance of the concrete type. So we have an instance through which we can access its components, call its methods, etc. You can also use that same form in an if instruction for safe access to a specific concrete type or the subtype of the type you're apparently having for the reference declaration. This is the safe downcasting operator in C sharp. Now, downcasting. It was frowned upon for many years with many good reasons, but the times are changing. Type testing, including downcasting, is coming big time into C sharp. Don't get this wrong. Many people just say, oh, this is downcasting, this is type testing, this is wrong. No, it is not. This is a different kind of a mindset. It comes from functional programming where type testing is the fundamental building block of mappings. Now, if you don't understand that well, try to understand it before saying that this is wrong, because it is not. This is actually good. Let me evoke this new method and we will be ready to run the application, but one note before that, it is critical to understand that the is operator is first checking whether the reference is not null and only then checking whatever comes next. If we are testing the type or subtype, the is operator will evaluate to false if the reference is null. It will only evaluate to true if the reference is not null and the object is of the requested type. I'm running the application, this is the output, and you can witness that the output truly contains actual data taken from an actual type, including the subtype of the base type, which happened to be available at runtime in one or the other reference. That is how type test and set works. Now, before we continue, let me remind you that you can download all the source code from this video and all other videos on my channel by becoming a sponsor. Visit me at Patreon, visit my Patreon page, become a patron and download all the source code I have made on this channel and learn from it. Let's move on. Let's rise the bar. Property patterns are coming next. Whether you wanted to capture the object or not, you can test whether its properties have desired values. I'm testing if the person's name is Bob and then printing out only if that condition is satisfied. So I didn't even check the type here. I know it is a person 
the ease operator guarantees that it is a non-null person, even though the, the reference is nullable. So I know that I do have a person object, but now I want to know something about it. I want to see its properties. And this if will only be satisfied if the first name property has the value Bob. Otherwise, in the else branch, I might print a generic message. I'm not interested in this case. I'll call this new function, run the application. This was the quick demo. Here it is, one and only Bob Coder and one and only Bob Martin. But mind the first line in the output, that is the line produced by the null reference, the ease operator. Evaluate it to false on the null reference. It didn't check the property, of course, because there is no such thing as a property on a null. Now, so far, we have been doing things to objects. Doing things to objects. That is pretty functional, right? But what if we wanted it the object-oriented way? In object-oriented programming, we expect objects to do things, not us to check their state and implement functions on top of that state. No, we want to call a method on an object. How do we do that on nullable references? Let me define a method on these two records. I will overwrite to string as an example of behavior we want to invoke. That is a simple example. And that will help me cover this next part of the demo. So there is the method, we can invoke it, but we don't know if that would be safe. And let me tell you, there are at least two ways to accomplish this. I will now show you how you do that with the nullable references. But in the next part of the demo, we will do the same operation with optional objects. Right now, we only have a nullable reference. What do we do? We could invoke the to string on this reference, but the compiler is already complaining this is an unsafe operation. What if the person is actually null? It would explode. We would have a null reference exception thrown at this place. So that is where the null propagation operator comes. We can optionally invoke the to string method on the person object. The compiler will effectively inject that is not null test before calling the to string method. But what will be the else branch? Well, the else branch would be to evaluate to a null string because to string is returning an actual string. But if there is no person, then there is no call to to string, there is no string to return. The null propagation operator would return a null string. So when you use a null propagation operator on an object, then you effectively receive a nullable result back. But we need a string here. We want to print something. Enter the null coalescing operator. It will pass a non-null value from the left to the output. It will evaluate to the left-hand value if that reference is not null. But if the left-hand value evaluates to null or the expression evaluates to null, then the null coalescing operator will evaluate to its right-hand side. So that one must be a non-nullable reference and it will be used as a substitute in case that the left-hand side is null. I will put an empty string here and now I will be able to print the result knowing that I have never passed a null report further. Let me call this method. I will pass both null and non-null references as a test. I will run the application and the null reference will evaluate to an empty string which will be ignored when printing out the report. And that is everything null propagation and null coalescing operators can do for you. Their power is quite limited as you can see. There is a more powerful option you have at your disposal. The optional objects. I will show you how you can use them and what is the basic use, the basic scenario for the optional objects.
There is no native support for optionals in C Sharp, and it's not likely that we will even get it in the near future. While that is so, you can install an external library such as Language Ext, which I will use in this demo, that will give us optional objects. If this is the first time that you meet optional objects, if you have no idea what they are, then this video will definitely not teach you that. It is a large topic. You can start by watching my other videos on specifically on the topic of optional objects and try to understand how they work, why we need them and how we use them effectively. It is really an interesting topic, the one which I believe every programmer should understand. But let me show you the basic scenario now. I will declare a couple of optional objects corresponding to the references I had above. What you need to understand from this declaration is that optional objects are never null. There is no null. Now we're talking about objects only and we'll look what we can do with them. Optional objects have two shapes, none if there is no object we want to represent and some if there is the object and in that case we must give that object to the optional object to wrap. And then why such a complication? Let's see. It is because choosing whether to do something or not, whether to produce a mapping or not, now becomes the optional object's job, not ours. What we use to test is now done inside the optional object. Our job is to tell what to do when there is the object inside. And so the match method is one primitive optional object support. It maps an optional object into a proper result never a null. Remember, there is no null. But you have to supply it with a mapping function. What to do when there is an object to map. And on top of that, you must also tell it what to return when there is none. Now, how does this differ from nullable references, you may ask? It differs in two substantial ways. One is trivial and that is that the optional object will check for missing objects for you. That is just syntax. The other is substantial. Optional objects are letting you apply functions that have no idea that some objects might be missing. And so you will have many classes with many methods on them that are operating on actual objects. And then suddenly it turns out that you cannot obtain, technically you cannot obtain an object, a reference to a valid object at the runtime. What do you do? How do you apply that function which only applies when there is an object? That is where optional objects come to the picture and they do it for you. Unlike nullable references, you can also apply an instance level method of this object or any other object, nullable, null propagation only supports methods, instance level methods on this object. You can apply those methods, but also methods from other instances that receive this object as the argument. That is what null propagation cannot achieve for you. Next, you can also apply extension methods, static methods, whatever you like. Any method you have in your domain model is applicable through optional objects. Nullable references require much more complication in code to achieve the same effect. Here you do that in a single line. There is one more variant I want to show you, the do method. It accepts a function to apply to the object, an action to apply, to pass the object to, when the object exists. The do operator, the do method will just ignore this action if there is no actual object. So I will print all the objects that exist and exactly do nothing when objects are missing. This is the shortest possible demo 
of optional objects again. Watch the videos on my channel if you want to learn more. I have already recorded a few videos that explain optional objects in more detail. I have called the method, the demo method, run the application and here is the output. Only the objects that were not none, only the sum objects were subjected to the write line function. And it was a single line of code on my end, very readable one, and I have used an external function, a function from a totally different part of the domain or this time of, of the framework, it doesn't matter. So you can take an existing function which knows nothing about not having an object, which expects an object, and just apply it to an optional object with no effort and no room for mistake, let alone an exception. These are the six shades of gray when talking about nulls. It is up to you to choose which one suits your problem best. Sometimes it will be the simplest solution that you need. Sometimes you will have to pull the heavy axe and use a much more complicated one for the problem you are solving, so be smart. You don't need optional objects everywhere, but when modeling a complex domain concept, optional objects will be much better than nullable references, I am assuring you that. Either way, I hope you have learned something valuable from this video. Don't forget to visit my Patreon page, subscribe to this channel, watch other videos I have prepared for you, keep writing good code, and see you in the next episode.